Welcome to Scooby-Doo Legend of the Podcast, the podcast where we try to investigate the cinematic timeline of Scooby-Doo. I'm your host, Ashton. And I'm your other host, Mariah. Welcome to Chapter 43, Pompeian Circumstance. So... We are on the second to last episode of What's New Scooby-Doo Season 1. What'd you think of this one? Well... I'm asking you every time. I know, you have to just know how I feel. Yep. Um, yeah, I liked it. I... Don't know what to say. It was good, a classic was... episode. My thing with this one is I feel like we didn't have a lot of instances with the villain before he was captured or before true. they unmasked him it was kind know. of more of like figuring out yeah. the mystery versus the villain randomly coming in and attacking yeah but i didn't mind that so much because the mystery actually made sense mm -hmm. like it was actually something that was kind of an issue that they were doing <laughs> so yeah, this follows from last the last episode that was super action packed. So this one was a little more calm with all the action. It was more investigative. Yeah, I have a dog on my lap, so if you guys hear any noises, it's it's probably the dog. <laughs> He's he, helping today. Yeah, he wanted to guest star on today's episode. So everyone, say hello to Bronx. Bronx, say hello to the people. Such wise words. Oh, yes. <laughs> Good job. Thank you. Okay, let me read our synopsis. I didn't say that, <laughs> but you know, y'all know what I mean. Synopsis. <laughs> While visiting Pompeii in Italy, the gang battle an ancient zombie gladiator who appears to be responsible for illegally dumping waste onto Mount. Vesuvius. That was, yeah, that's pretty much it. <laughs> yeah. All right, we will jump in. So Fred, he's been practicing his Italian. Yeah, he's got the little phrase book, and he's been trying to say things, and then they. Trying is the key word there. <laughs> yeah. Tr mm -hmm. Yeah, he has a lot of... A lot of instances where he tries to learn the language. Wasn't he trying to do Spanish in Monster of Mexico? That's what I was thinking. I'm like, wasn't that Fred that yeah. was trying to learn? So, at least he's trying. I'm yeah. I'm give him that, but, you know. Yeah, at least he's not going and just expecting everybody to know English for him. Yeah. He claims that he can bench 220. This is the first time we're hearing him say that. Oh, thank you, Bronx. Yeah, he was trying to intimidate, was it the gladiator? Because mm -hmm. he was like, don't mess with me, I can bench press 220, which was kind of funny. Yeah, he, the, 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 he'll claim that a lot, but this is his first little, like, take that. He was able to rent them mopeds that they could scoot around on. Yeah. I thought that was fun. He He's very much like, because he's learning his Italian, he's like, I got this. I, like, he ordered them all food at the end, <laughs> but he ordered a plant. Yep. <laughs> what? And they're all laughing like, oh yeah. man, that was a good try, but... <laughs> Uh, that's that's all I have for Fred. He was just kind of the one to get things for him. <laughs> um, I put that towards the end when the gladiator is coming to attack, he just flat out jumps on him and calls him a doofus. Yeah, like he was just like, "I'm tired of being a nice guy. Just let me." He just totally jumps him. It's yeah. kind of funny. Nope. Knocks him out. <laughs> no trap or anything. I mean, they tried to do a trap, but didn't work earlier so then he was just like fine whatever i'm just gonna he was like i'm just gonna <laughs> um show you that i am strong and can bench 220 i'm just gonna knock yeah. you out by jumping on you because <laughs> this is ridiculous 
So if the gladiator wasn't a zombie already, he's now, now he's a ghost. <laughs> yeah, but that was pretty much the last thing they had for Fred. So Daphne has a guidebook of Italy. Thought that was kind of fun. Yeah, and they're going through all the the places in the guidebook. Yeah, they they get gelato. They come out with ice cream when we first see them. It's like, my guidebook said that this has the play- best ice cream or something, whatever. Unless that was the gelato. That was the gelato. Same dip. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I don't know. I thought that was fun that she had the guidebook, not Velma. Yeah, true. Because Velma had a guidebook in Legend of the Vampire when they were in Australia. So maybe Daphne was excited to be in Italy. Probably, like, honestly. I want to know. I want to make decide where we're going. <laughs> yeah, sorry guys, you, <laughs> this is my trip. Yeah, you guys are just coming along. So, uh, they they eventually take a tour guide of Pompeii, and the lady was like something about like, do you want to see the toga or something? Which I'm guessing is clothing. Yeah, those like, like. like yeah, the dress things, yeah. robe dress things, yeah. Anyway, Daphne was like, ooh, yes. Velma was like, mm, no. <laughs> Sorry. Daphne likes fashion in all forms. <laughs> mm-hmm. Doesn't matter what century. But, yeah, they didn't, they didn't end up going to see the toga clothing, whatever it was, so. And then, let's see what else do I have. Oh, she saved Fred with a tour guide cart, eventually, when he's first going at the gladiator, because they're in, like, the Coliseum, and there there's this mysterious guy who was like, I am the master, I tell who to fight, blah, blah, blah. So they were like, gladiator, fight him. But Fred was about to be stabbed. And so Daphne... Rode in, yeah. Save the day. She seems to be able to find whatever's around and utilize it. And luckily, in this case, it was a car, <laughs> a little golf cart car type thing. And she was like, "Get in, we're going, <laughs> we're leaving now." What did Shaggy say? Something like, "Daphne's got road rage." Yeah, Daphne's got road rage. Don't mess with her; she's not <laughs> right now. Oh, the lights. Came. She used her credit card because emergency. The the mopeds fell in the water, sunk, so they had to rent a car. So it looks like she also bought some clothes. Oh, really? I missed that. Part. She like had like one of those head scarf things, you know, yeah. and sunglasses. She was like, "Yeah, credit card, you know, for emergencies." I'm like, "Yep, rental car, sure. Clothes, okay, girl." <laughs> It's always a fashion emergency, yeah. obviously. She can't ride the convertible car without a headscarf. No. That's just... No. Or sunglasses? No. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely not. So I thought that was funny. And then we learned that she can drive stick shift. Yep, and Fred can't. Yeah. Because he's like, I've seen I've seen it on TV and like stalls a car and <laughs> the next scene <laughs> is her driving <laughs> it. Yeah, and did you notice Fred was just like, mm, are you kidding me? He's like, dang it, I... Couldn't drive the cool car. Um, but it totally made me think of Curse of the 13th Ghost. Because in the 13th Ghost of Scooby-Doo, Daphne is driving this red van that's called the Mystery Machine with Z. And so in the movie, you know, Fred's like, I'll drive. And then he's like, ah, oh, sh- stick shift. I can't do this. <laughs> but, you know, Daphne knows how and has been driving that car. She's like, I'll drive. We got this. But it made, this made me think of that. Like, oh, this is the first time we're seeing her drive stick shift. So it makes yeah. sense once she drives that van around. She was able to stop this volcano from erupting because of the, 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 she likes kicked the machine. That was causing the lava to rise. And I, I need to look up what a stair climber is or whatever she called it. She's like, it always works when my stair climber gets jammed. Yeah. I was like, oh, okay. I'm guessing it's like an exercise thing, but I don't really know. <laughs> Maybe it's it's a little past our time. We weren't 
We weren't around when they were a thing. <laughs> or we just don't go to the gym. And just uh, yeah, it's true, <laughs> probably. Yeah, she she totally has her own home gym. Yeah, like, I, yeah. <laughs> that's all this stuff. That's all I have for Daphne. The only thing I put that's not significant, but she has a pink flip phone. Yeah, that's true. I mm-hmm. thought it was cute. Cute little pink flip phone. I wonder if we'll see it in Chill Out Scooby-Doo, because... In that movie, they're in Paris at the beginning, and Fred just got a new phone in that movie, and he's like, oh my gosh, I'll get my new phone and stuff, so I wonder if we'll see Daphne, like, open hers and be like, well, yeah, but my phone, my pink phone. My phone is pink. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so here's the thing. <clears throat> <laughs> Your notes, he flips the page from full of notes to empty. <laughs> I have one thing for Velma, nothing for Shaggy, nothing for Scooby. Um, my one thing for Velma is that she has the map. Woo! Yay, go Velma. So she did have one thing of instruction during the trip. Okay, guide. you know what I thought was interesting, though, while we're on Velma, is that she apparently knew Italian. Yeah, she just let Fred take over every time, which is like, keep trying. That was my note, is that she knows what Fred is really saying, but she still lets him say it, and then after, she, it was kind of funny, because she didn't, like, directly, well, she kind of did sometimes, but for a few of the scenes when he would say something and walk away, she'd whisper to Daphne or Shaggy, like, he actually said this, but, you know, he's trying. (laughs) So it was kind of funny. (laughs) Yeah, I just thought that was a funny one. Hmm. You know, we could have could have saved a lot of trouble, but, you know, I guess they wanted a good laugh from Fred. Oh, but also, I almost forgot this. Fred is able to correctly read that one sign. That's true. At the, at the whatever place the it was. The security entrance thing. And then Daphne reads the second sign. Mm-hmm. And I think Velma reads yeah, the Velma third read sign. Yeah, Velma read the last So one. they all can read a little bit or understand mm-hmm. a little bit. So that was interesting. Yeah, I thought it was funny because Velma read the last sign and then so she was like, okay, well, it's settled. We're going in. Cause basically, the security guard was trying to keep them away because, wow, plot twist. He's in on this scheme, but all the signs were basically like, never closed, always open to the public and whatever. So Velma was like, well, yeah, you have a posted sign, so we're going in. So peace. And then did you notice once they got the mopeds? And drove back in. They all were like, hi. Said hi to the security guy. They knew his name. I can't remember his they name. They were just but... like, we don't have to listen to you. Cause... Yeah, they just drove past him. Hi, hi, hi. And that was funny. He was just like, okay, we need a new plan. This is not working. Well, and then, okay, I that was when I was like, okay, he's in on this. Because he had a neck brace all of a sudden when they were passing him on the mopeds. I was like, well, why the heck do you have a neck brace oh yeah it was because i didn't notice that they were like, fighting him and you know as the gladiator and he obviously apparently did something to his neck so yeah that makes sense so he's acting a little sus <laughs> yeah Mm-hmm. um shaggy and scooby were there so one thing that was funny is that shaggy and scooby like, they were just prepared to be live bait. They already knew. Yeah, so that's they, true. Yeah, they brought their own Scooby Snacks. And Two like, boxes. Before they even asked them, they're just like, yeah, we know. We're already ready. We brought our own Scooby Snacks to bribe ourselves. And, like, they just <laughs> go for it. Hey, peace were... out. Yeah. <laughs> that was funny. That's right. <laughs> yeah, and then they just drove their little scooters. They were like, okay, bye. And then they kept, like, you know, they don't know much Italian, so they just were like, Spaghetti, ravioli, macaroni, pizza. That's all we know. <laughs> yeah, you're like, come out wherever you are, please. So, yeah, I thought that was funny. Um, I have one thing for Scooby, but it's insignificant. Oh. But he liked going fast on the scooters. Yeah, it's Shaggy's he- like, he, Scooby's born to be wild. Yeah, and he was, because they're, they're little moped scooters, so Scooby was in the little sidecar thing, and it was kind of funny. He was just chilling there. Yeah, he's like, faster, wee! 
Yeah, I thought that was cute. He's not afraid of that. Well, I mean, it kind of makes sense, though, because he's a dog, you know? Like, I mean, he's not hanging his head out the window, but it's kind of the same thing. Yeah, he can feel the, mm-hmm. the wind blowing through his fur, <laughs> stick his tongue out, and just enjoy it. <laughs> so we had a, a few side characters. I only noted two. <laughs> we had Captain Na- Naples. He was basically a a captain of this garbage boat. So he'd gather all the garbage onto his boat and take it wherever you take the garbage. Which we later learn is in the volcano. <laughs> because they were... Yeah, illegally dumping it in there. Yep, which wasn't actually garbage. No. Well, that's who... Who picked up on it? I, somebody f- found something on his boat and was like... It was Daphne. Okay. She, it was a candlestick, but she calls it yeah. something fancy. A candle something. Yeah. Not candelabra, but it was a different term. But it, she's like, it looks really nice to be on a garbage boat. And the captain was like, uh, you never know. People consider trash these days and like throws it in <laughs> somewhere else. <laughs> and then they, once they get up onto the volcano... She finds it again because it didn't like it didn't make it into the volcano. It fell off the side. Yeah, and it was like really hot. Yeah. So that kind of gave that away. And then there was a tour guide, Alexandra Vigi. Yes. Something like that. Mm hmm. The girl who, once they got to Pompeii, they were, they got a tour from them. But she also gave, we're giving them like a hiking tour up the volcano. Only to a certain point, though. Then she was like, we're turning around. Well, I thought it was weird because she, like, stopped to talk to them, Mm -hmm. turned around and started walking up, and as soon as they mentioned the gladiator, she stopped and was like, yep, this is as far as we go. So I was like, that's a little weird because she was continuing to go higher, but then she all of a sudden was like, nope, that's it. I have to mention that. Well, it kind of made me think it was her at that point. that's what I was thinking, too, because I was like, she's hiding something. Yeah. But she was... She in... wasn't involved. She was just tired of the gladiator talk, I guess. Well, she she thought they were part of the scheme at that point. Yeah. And so she was like, oh, okay, you guys are like, you know, getting in trouble and I'm your way up here. So we're going back immediately. You're not going to do whatever you're doing. But obviously the gang were just trying to get some answers of some sort. Yeah, she didn't want any part of it. Yeah. So. She did, like, come back up the volcano once they caught the gladiator, though. She's just like, oh, thank you. Maybe she was coming to see what they were doing up there. Yeah, true. Maybe she was, like, like, spying on them. And see, make sure they were up to no good. And it was like, oh, oh, just kidding. (laughs) Yeah, and then we had that, this, like, security guard of... The Pompeii place thing. I didn't get his name, but... I think it was Hugo. 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 Because I wrote it down. Probably. That kind of sounds right, yeah. So, yeah, we kind of already talked about him, but he was the one that was portraying the gladiator. But he had an accomplice, um, Captain Nables, who... Obviously, was the one dumping the stuff into the volcano, but um, Hugo was scaring people that would get too close in case they found out what was actually going on. So they were working together. I kind of didn't understand what their plan was. Like, what were they even trying to do? Because it was all melting in there. So basically, they were like, because they were the construction company and they were. Like digging up the land to build their build their whatever they're building, mm-hmm. but if they found ancient artifacts, like then they couldn't build there anymore. So what they were doing is when they found the ancient artifacts, they were hiding them and posing them as trash, and oh. basically melting them to hide the evidence, which is kind of dumb because they could have also just like sold it yeah, from they, like the black market and made yeah. money too. But their goal was just to keep their construction company up and going, <laughs> so they were just trying to melt away all the evidence that they were finding these illegal artifacts and building 
legally. So that's basically... Yeah, apparently they're a precious construction company. Which, even though it was a cartoon, it was hard to see all that stuff melt. Because I'm like, those are like rare artifacts they're just throwing in a well, volcano. Yeah, it's history. Yeah, like, exactly. So it's like... You're ruining They all really that. weren't like... They really needed to be stopped. Yeah. They, they were not... Yeah. It wasn't just a silly, oh, I don't want this to to direct this movie. It was... They were destroying <laughs> valuable and precious property. <laughs> uh... They got him, though. Yep, they got him. <laughs> well, yeah, so Fred just, like, knocked the gladiator out, so you go. He just knocked him out, and then yeah. uh, Nables was like, uh, bro, he's the only one that can man this machine. The whole thing's gonna erupt. Which is dumb. Like, they only had one person. <laughs> yeah, why didn't they work. teach him? Like, So, of course, the whole gang starts pressing buttons, like, how do we stop it? And that's when Daphne kicks it. And she's like, it always works on my yeah. whatever machine she uses. Whenever it gets jammed. So I guess, thank you. Kind of dumb luck there, but you know. Yeah. It worked. So the villain they were portraying was like a, a zombie gladiator is what they kept calling him. So basically he was in all this armor. You couldn't see his face, you know, just his eyes. And then he had... Two black horse and rode on this chariot. The only time, well, okay, no, never mind. I was gonna say the only time we saw him off of his chariot, but I think we saw him off his chariot twice when he like was fighting Fred in the Coliseum and then when he was about to murder Shaggy and Fred jumped on him. Yeah, <laughs> so again, he wasn't really present a lot. During the episode. No, he wasn't. And then Shaggy and Scooby rode the chariot down the volcano behind the car that they rented. Thought that was funny. They are like, okay, we'll take the horses back down. We don't know whose they are. Free ride. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. I kind of really like that in this episode, we, we kept seeing the map and it would like show us kind of where they're going, like how far... It is from point to point that they're going. Yeah. I thought that was fun. Kind of seeing the little circle that they had made around where they were visiting. And then apparently they still had a lot of time of their vacation left. Uh, once they captured them. Because Fred was like, okay, let's go back to our vacation. <laughs> I guess they finally get to relax and have a vacation. <laughs> yeah, go back to that ice cream. That, so, <laughs> kind of funny. And that's, that's that. That was the episode. That was the episode. We only have one episode left for season one. Wow, then it's season two. It's season <laughs> two. Uh, do you have our joke? Yes, I do. Why are we? Okay. Knock, knock. Oh, who's there? Handsome. Handsome who? Handsome of that pizza to me. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Because uh, <laughs> they're in Italy. Yeah. You gotta get the pizza. <laughs> well, now I want pizza. You're welcome. Thanks. <laughs> I guess I'll not have pizza tonight because we're not having that. But. <laughs> that's gonna do it for this episode. <laughs> Appreciate everybody listening, everybody tuning in. If you'd like to get in contact with us, about the podcast, about Scooby-Doo, about anything. You can find us on Twitter and Instagram at SD Legend Podcast. If you'd like to email us directly, you can do so at sdlegendpodcast at gmail.com. If you are listening to this on Apple Podcasts, we would love it if you left us a review. Or if you're listening to this on YouTube, you can leave us a comment. That'd be great as well. And if you'd like to be directly featured in a future podcast episode, you can leave us a voice message. Go to anchor.fm slash sdlegendpodcast. Record a voice message there and we can feature it. So, that's going to do it for this episode. Thank you everybody for listening. One more episode of season one. Hopefully we can get London back for the last episode at least. Yeah, I think she'd... 
Would you like to be the last one? If if not, then we're 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 gonna do a season one review still. Like we're still gonna do season reviews. So you know, maybe she can join us for that. If not, but she will be back eventually. She will. <laughs> yes. Just the this is partly why it took us a minute to get back. The podcast is con uh, scheduling conflicts. So Mariah and I said, "Well, we'll do a few." get it going again and london will be back shortly so yay (laughs) (laughs) so thank you everybody for tuning in we'll catch you in the next one Bye. bye